Hey everybody, Luke here, and today we are talking more about vertigo, and specifically positional vertigo, and ways to uh, eliminate it and clear it up. So uh, I've got some other videos about vertigo, um, you know, either on my blog page or on YouTube, depending on where you're watching this from. Um, so if you're already familiar with vertigo, this video is going to help you again uh, figure out how to clear it, how to eliminate it. And if you want more background information, just search for those video videos um, again on the blog page here on the website or on YouTube. So there's some videos about like what is positional vertigo or BPPV. Um, so again, if you need the background before watching this video, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, let's just jump into my three-step approach for how we help our uh, clients clear it here in the clinic. So the first step then with positional vertigo is you've got to figure out which canal in your inner ear it's coming from. So um, again, if you've watched some introductory stuff, you probably already know that you've got these little fluid-filled canals inside your ear. And the cause of vertigo is when little rocks or crystals flow into the canal and it, uh, you know, it affects the way the fluid is moving in the canal and that gives you the uh, vertigo with different position changes or different head changes. So first step again is you have to figure out which canal is being involved. Is it on the left side or the right side? And specifically, is it the posterior canals or the horizontal canals? So the way that we help people figure that out in the clinic is there's two different tests that are specific to those two canals. The third canal isn't usually involved, although that would show up on one of the tests as well. So we are testing all three, but essentially it's just two that we really, that are usually seen. So um, for the posterior canal, we're gonna do the Dick's Hall Pike test. And for the horizontal canal, we're gonna do the supine roll test. I do have videos specific to each of those. So if you wanna watch those, you can. Um, but again, for now, let me grab something here. For now, uh, just keep in mind that you want to do those positional tests to see which canal is involved. So from there, once you know which canal is involved, then you want to clear those crystals or those rocks from the canals. So um, again, if it's a posterior canal, you're typically going to do the Epley maneuver, which again, more information online or my videos if you want to watch that. And if it's a horizontal canal, there's a couple different maneuvers you can use. Um, and one of them is called the barbecue roll. The other one's called the Gafani. I'm not going to go into details on this video, but just know that that's your second step. Clear the canals from the, um, clear the canals, clear the crystals or the rocks from the canals. Okay. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into detail on those right now because it would get really long winded and maybe overwhelming. Um, but again, you can look more for those on other videos I have, or of course, post below or email me and I'll, I'll get you the appropriate information. So that's step two. So once you've cleared the canals, which we know we've cleared them because then we put you back through the positional tests and you don't have the vertigo and the associated eye movements or nystagmus. Once you clear them then, you want to prevent those little rocks or crystals from floating back out again and you want to tune up your inner ear. So prevention is fairly straightforward. You know, uh, in general, you're just avoiding any of those uh, movements with your head that might cause the crystals to float back out. So any rapid head movements, you know, bending forward real quickly or, or throwing your head back, you know, turning side to side or moving quickly. And then potentially you're going to want to avoid um, sleeping flat for a little while or sleeping on your affected ear. So that's the prevention part of it. Usually for a day or two, I recommend people sleep upright like in a chair and just try not to do any of those rapid head movements. And then tuning up there's some specific vestibular exercises you want to do or some balance exercises because oftentimes if you've had vertigo for a while, even after you clear it, you still feel kind of a general sense of unsteadiness. You're not quite back to 100%. And I look at that as, um, again, your left ear and your right ear being kind of out of, out of calibration and you've just got to kind of tune them up a little bit. So there's specific exercises you want to do to tune, to tune those up. We call those your VOR exercises. Um, and again, there's other resources for how to do that as well. Um, other balance exercises you can do, things like practicing your balance with your eyes closed. Again, a lot of other balance stuff you can do. Not gonna go into detail, but that's what you wanna do for step three. So those are the three steps. Figure out which canal is involved, horizontal or posterior, and then which side it is. If you're lucky, it's just one side, usually it is. If you're not lucky, it's another side or both sides. So that's step one, figure out which side, which canal. Step two is clear it with repositioning. And then step three is prevent it from coming back and then try to tune up your inner ear after that. So those are the three steps. That's what works for people in my experience and then our other PTs, of course, as well. And I do want to mention one fourth step, though, um, just to kind of expand to the bigger picture, is that uh, just recognize that even after you clear your positional vertigo, it's very likely you've got other issues that are also having a negative effect on your balance. 
So I've got some other information again via my blogs or my videos, whichever you prefer to watch or read. And it talks about the eight other factors associated with your balance. And so you really want to uh, just you know have the bigger view of your balance in general and say even though now my vertigo is much better, if you're still having difficulty with certain activities um, or you just feel unsteady or uneven, like walking on uneven surfaces or being in the dimly lit room, things like that, then just recognize that even though you've made a really good step in clearing your vertigo, there may be more you can do so that you can feel more confident, more steady, do those activities you like to do. So just realize that as your fourth step. Keep going. You know, if you need some help from a PT or someone in your area, you know, seek the help you need. Obviously, um, if you're in my area, reach out to me in my clinic. We do this stuff all the time. Um, so that's just one last piece of advice along with those three steps. Uh, I guess last thing I'll say with the three steps too is that uh, treating yourself for vertigo is not something I usually recommend people do. You know, there's a lot you can do to kind of understand what you've got going on, but doing like the various repositioning maneuvers or really making sure that you know which canal you're trying to treat, that can be pretty tricky on your own. Um, I think it's relatively straightforward for you know PTs like myself, for people that work here at the clinic, because we've been trained to do it and we can watch your eyes and stuff for you. But to do it on yourself, uh, potentially is pretty tricky. So don't feel bad if you need help with this one. Um, I wouldn't recommend you do it alone for the most part, but you know you are your own person, so do what you want. <laughs> okay, so that's it for now. If you have more questions on vertigo, how to treat it, or just balance in general, feel free to reach out to me either through um, the video or the blog or email. So that's it. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.